You're an agribusiness executive navigating an increasingly competitive market while trying to grow your company. Mergers and acquisitions are pitched as an accelerant to growth, but many M&A deals destroy more value than they create. Welcome to the Paysetter Pod, where we explore and reveal the perspectives, insights, and approaches for successful mergers and acquisitions. Here's your host, the Integration Paysetter, Joe Mosier. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Pace Setter Pod. I am your host, Joe Mosier, and I am thrilled and grateful that you've chosen to spend your time with us today. Mergers and acquisitions are an attractive path to accelerate the growth of your food or agribusiness firm. Buying or combining with another company opens all sorts of really interesting and compelling opportunities. This could be things like winning more market share or expanding your product portfolio. Maybe it's gaining access to new customers or to new markets. Maybe you're acquiring important talent that's going to drive the growth of your business. Or maybe you're getting access to critical technology and innovations. Or maybe you're looking to consolidate within your space and enjoy the efficiency gains that come with operating at economies of scale. But as we say every week on this show, M&A deals carry risk. When you enter into one of these transactions, there is a wide distribution of outcomes, but nearly all of them are to the downside. M&A deals rarely exceed your expectations. The very best that you can hope for is that everything that you have detailed in your business case that supports the transaction comes true. But think about that. How often is it that any of the projects you undertake in your business result in you enjoying 100% of the benefits you anticipated? In our experience, M&A deals can destroy way more value than they create, and they leave companies worse off than they were before. But what does that mean to be left worse off than you were before? It's not uncommon to see companies struggling under higher debt servicing costs or trying to respond to the increased expenses from managing duplicative locations or systems or teams. It's very common for businesses to experience lower productivity during the integration period or to see key talent leaving the organization, talent either from the acquiring or the acquired company. You get customer dissatisfaction. You suddenly have a very confusing value proposition because your products and services portfolio is misaligned. And you also have processes in both entities that were designed to run the businesses that existed yesterday, but not processes that are designed to run the business that exists today. And generally, people point to lower profitability and financial performance in the wake of an M&A transaction. Now, the reasons for this are abundant, but there's three important facts that I think are critical to highlight at this point that contribute to the failure rate and the underperformance rate. M&A is a process, not an event. We are too front-loaded in our efforts of getting the deal done, and we don't leave enough gas in the tank and don't leave enough residual energy in our teams and our organizations to deal with comes next. Second, closing the deal is not the end. It's the end of the beginning. There's a point of celebration. It's exciting. You get the deal done. The transaction is closed. All the work that went into getting you there is behind you. There is cause to celebrate, but it's not the end of the process. And in fact, the lion's share of the work still lays ahead of you. All of the integration work and the value creation, that is still to come. And finally, integration is the hardest part of the M&A process. So not only does it not get enough emphasis, and not only does it last longer than the deal-making portion of the process, but it is also the hardest aspect to manage. And so to help you avoid these pitfalls, today we're going to offer you and share with you a solution that helps you not only protect your investment against the downside risks, but also improves your overall outcomes by reducing the turbulence of the integration phase of the M&A process. And specifically, we're going to talk about why you need a process why that is important. We're going to share with you our proven process, Integration Pace Setter, and we're going to share how you can learn more or get started. So let's roll. Why do you need a process? Most small to middle market food and agribusiness firms are not serial acquirers. And when you're not a routine M&A participant, this makes the odds of success even more challenging because you don't have the muscle memory. You haven't done the reps. You don't have a, pr a routine practice from past transactions. Generally, our clients also don't have the people on staff who have experience managing successful integrations. And so in the absence of both the technical competency among your staff on how to do it, and without the organizational memory at a company level from previous transactions, you're going to need a process to guide you. And this is not an exclusive challenge to small and middle market food and agribusiness firms. 
even the large commercials and serial acquirers, they have this need too. And they generally have a process. Now, they may call it their M&A integration playbook, or they may call it an integration COE, a center of expertise, or some other label. But at the end of the day, they have a combination of people and process to ensure that they know what to expect, what to do, what to avoid, and how to wrestle their integration to the ground as efficiently and effectively as possible. And so if this is your first deal or your first deal in a long time, you need a process. So what does this look like? Unless you're incredibly reckless, you follow a process and many things that you do for the first time. Frankly, with anything that you're gonna do of significance. So let's take the example of learning how to operate a vehicle, whether that's a skid steer to push grain in a bin, if it's a truck on the farm, or if it's a vehicle in town, you're gonna follow a process. It's gonna be a series of activities. Things like studying book learning and studying the rules of the road. Having someone show you what all the knobs and buttons in the vehicle do. You're probably going to spend some time observing someone driving a car so they can demonstrate how it's done. They can demonstrate how to turn off the really annoying lane assist in new cars. They'll demonstrate how to change the mirrors, how to adjust your seat, how to open the trunk, how to open the hood, how to figure out which side of the car the gas is on. And then ultimately in a controlled environment, you're going to practice. You're going to practice driving that vehicle under the guidance of a licensed driver who's sitting right next to you to help you see the risks, to help you see the changes that are coming and can help give you encouragement when you're doing things right. You don't just jump in and start driving. And if you do, no one's going to be surprised if you end up in a ditch or wrapped around a tree. And furniture assembly is kind of the same deal. When you buy furniture, they're going to provide you with documents that shows you a review of all the component parts. They're going to detail out the tools that you're going to use. And they're going to give you the sequence of steps that you're going to follow. And hopefully they can give you some information on what to do if you run into trouble. Now, if you're one of those people who just rips open the box from Ikea and tosses the instructions aside and just jumps in, starts turning the Allen wrench, I don't think I can help you. This podcast is probably not for you. But for everybody else, the same principles apply to M&A integrations. You need a process. And so today, I'd also like to talk to you about our process, the integration pay setter. Our solution is designed to meet the risks of the very destructive nature of M&A integrations. We do this with a five-phased approach. The objective is really simple, to de-risk your M&A transaction, to deliver better results in less time and with less disruption by bringing these existing businesses together. An integration pay setter ensures that you have a defined plan to get you from value articulation in your M&A business case to value realization in your post-integration steady-state operations. It's like a bridge that takes you from expectations to results. And our process has evolved over time, but we've always kept several key criteria in mind. The first is blending sophistication with pragmatism. The integration pay setter process leverages years of experience and learning working on large-scale change and strategy initiatives in agribusiness and applies the same disciplined practices that serial acquirers would expect but with a pragmatism that's suited for smaller business environments. We also seek rigor without rigidity. The process is strong and it is sound, but it can be adapted to meet the unique parameters of your business, of your culture, and the uniqueness of your specific deal structure. And finally, we want to provide long tail benefits well beyond the integration phase. M&A is really about transformation. The company you have on the back end of a deal is not the same that you had on the front end. And the goal should not be to merely survive the M&A process, but you want to come out of that experience ready to accelerate into the next S-curve of growth. The process should leave behind residual knowledge and practices and benefits that are going to serve you far beyond those acute integration activities that are right in the shadow of the M&A deal close. Poorly executed mergers and acquisitions destroy more value than they create. They can set your company back years. To defend your firm's position in the marketplace, you need access to the leading practices that unlock the greater potential of your people, processes, and systems. If you are undertaking a company transformation or pursuing an acquisition as a vehicle to grow, set up a call with Joe by visiting www.mosherecg.com. Now, as I said, the integration pay setter process includes five phases. Those are one, operating model, two, process discovery, three, build the plan, four, execute the plan, and five, sustain and optimize. Now, this episode is not meant to be a sedative. 
So I'm going to resist the urge to tell you all about each phase in detail. And rather, I'm going to try to summarize them for you in terms of what they are and what they're meant to accomplish. So starting with operating model, establishing your integration operating model is about doing the work up front to debate and to design and codify how you're going to connect your integration activities to your deal strategy, how you're going to set the right scope for value creation, how you're going to achieve a deeper level of leadership alignment, and how you're going to set your sights firmly on the quantifiable results that you expect from your transaction. And in the operating model phase, we answer questions like, why are we doing this deal? Why is this important to our business? Why should our customers be thrilled? What does governance of the effort look like? What role do people play? Who has decision rights to course correct when needed? Because guaranteed things are going to go exactly as you expect. What is the shortest path to getting above the break-even line with our investment? In other words, when does the cash burn stop and the ROI begin? And then how are we going to know if we've been successful? Now, you can check out some of our previous episodes to learn in more detail about some of these challenges that we tackle in the operating model phase. We talked about defining the integration of your why back in episode two. Episode three was about creating customer value through your integration. And of course, in episode four, we talked about defining your minimum viable integration, which is a key deliverable and output from the operating model phase. The second phase in our process is called process discovery. And process discovery is all about taking a brief step back from your M&A deal and having a good, long look in the mirror. Every business, whether you are a 100-year-old corporate multinational or a scrappy startup or somewhere in between, every business is a collection of processes. And in this phase of of our work, we're going to catalog and we name the processes that you have and what their purpose is. And specifically, we're looking to identify which of those processes cut across multiple departments or functions. And we do this because these are the ones that could be the stickiest challenges during integration. Order fulfillment is a perfect example. How do customers access your products? How do they know what the price is? How do they know if there's inventory available? How do they submit the order? How is that order confirmed and finalized? How is that order transmitted to your warehousing team to locate the inventory, to set it aside, to palletize it, to label it? How is it has freight then coordinated to produce the manifest, to arrange the shipping instructions, to communicate a targeted arrival date? How is it then loaded? How is it dispatched? How is it tracked on site? How do we confirm delivery and validate that the correct quantity and, and type of product was delivered? Then ultimately, how is an invoice issued on the back end? These are the kinds of processes that you do every day and in a stable, steady state prior to your deal they generally work pretty well. But when you suddenly collapse two businesses into one, something as simple as taking orders, filling orders, shipping orders, and billing against orders becomes really complicated. And that's what we're going to be looking at. Now, big companies don't have a monopoly on complexity. And I know many people think about this and say, we're a small business. We're not that complicated. This isn't going to be that much work. But I can promise you that doing this work preemptively is going to reduce integration friction and integration surprises. Now, we did an earlier episode dedicated specifically to the power of process, and you can check that out back in episode seven if you want to learn more. So that brings us to phase three, which is build the plan. This is what everyone's been waiting for. But without a process in place, this is where most companies begin their integration planning activities. They recklessly leap right over all of the other critical upfront work of defining the business case, of getting surgical on the value drivers, of defining those customer success levers, and figuring out what are the integration performance metrics. They skip past all of that and they start writing down, okay, here's what we have to do. And that is why their plans are incomplete. That's why they fail to anticipate the challenges they're going to encounter. And that's why they leave them on their back foot, continually reacting to integration issues instead of anticipating and managing integration demands. From this phase, you walk away armed with your end-to-end plan that's going to guide decisions and focus once the deal closes. And it's going to give you a project plan that serves as a roadmap to shorten the time to value and to minimize performance dips during integration. It also equips you with customized dashboards to help you monitor performance and highlight progress. You can be looking at progress both at specific work stream levels or in the aggregate at the organizational level. Phase four is execute the plan. And this is where you simply put the plan into action. You start completing the steps that are identified. You continuously monitor progress. You keep the pressure on to ensure alignment. You communicate the risks and you celebrate success. 
And this is where breakthroughs happen. And all the time that you spent preparing starts paying dividends. And the fifth and final phase is what we call sustain and optimize. This final phase is about bringing the integration to a close without losing all the momentum that your investments have created. It ensures that you wind down your integration effort knowing that one, your business has stabilized, that two, you're ready to transition from the integration mindset back to routine operations, and that three, that you leave this experience in this point in time and these sets of activities, you walk away with a clear-eyed view of how you're going to sustain the gains you've made, as well as a sense of what you need to do to optimize the business for tomorrow, both short-term quick wins and longer-term improvement opportunities. Now, back in episode nine, we talked about how to stick the landing of your M&A integration, and that's a great resource. I encourage you to go back and check it out if you haven't listened to it already. If you want to hear more about the sustain and optimize phase of the integration pace setter process. So there you have it, our five phase process, integration pace setter. So how to learn more or what comes next? So throughout this episode, I've been sharing some references to earlier episodes of the Pace Setter Pod that can help you explore these topics further. But if you're ready to learn more, there are several things you can do right now. The first one is I would encourage you to go out to our website, www.mosiercg.com, and download our white paper on the integration Pace Setter process, which not only describes the process in more detail, but also demonstrates how it works in real life through the experiences and the words and the testimony of one of our clients. And second, from our website, you can also book a call with me. You can ask more questions about the process. We can discuss a deal that you're considering. We can evaluate a deal that you're pursuing. We can help you get the results that you want from your transaction. So let's briefly review what we've covered today. We provided a synthesis of why M&A deals perform so poorly and the very real financial and performance impacts that this can have on your company. We talked about why you need a process to help you navigate the critical integration phase of the M&A process. We reviewed our five-phase process, integration pace setter, and we shared some of the ways that you can learn more. I'm very passionate about this topic, and I hope that each of you walks away today with at least one insight or one idea that you can apply in your business to help you succeed in accelerating your growth strategy. I never take your time for granted. It means a great deal to me that you chose to spend it listening to this podcast. And if we have been successful, then you have walked away with something of value. Before we go, I'd like to ask you to do the following. Please hit subscribe on your podcast player and leave a review. It really helps us improve the quality of the content and the relevance of the topics for you. Please share the Pace Setter Pod with others that you think can benefit from hearing more about the problems that we're trying to solve and the work that we do to support the growth of food and agribusiness. I encourage you to follow or connect with me, Joe Mosier, on LinkedIn. Of course, you can visit us online at MosierCG.com to check out some of the resources I mentioned earlier, or of course, to set up a call directly. And as always, again, this show is for you. And we love it when you reach out and you give us show topics, give us ideas, tell us what's on your mind and what you'd like to hear more about. So thank you again. Thank you as always for listening to the Pace Setter Pod. And I hope you have a wonderful and safe day. Be well. This is the podcastfactory.com.